Welcome to another edition of Strictly Business. This week we feature an enterprise that was roused from death, so to speak, to become a highly successful venture. This makeover came about from a determination to save a dying industry. And in the process, the entrepreneur has come up with a very profitable business. Mr. Buddy Tan, owner and manager of Black Wing Shoes that are proudly Marikina made. Buddy graduated with a degree in political science and worked with several of our politicians as a freelance consultant on the grassroots level, rubbing elbows with fisher folks and farmers. Before that, he worked in a bank and a few IT firms before he decided to join the family business. During my free time, uh, I took the time to study how they made shoes now. Because a lot of people told me, especially the older people here in Marikina, told me that uh, Marikina made shoes, hindi na kaya lumaban sa mga imported. So just a proof of concept, wanted to prove them wrong. Then, and, um, then started with this experiment na we can we uh, that we can modernize um, yung uh, how we did the shoes, not in the sense na mass production, but in slow building pa rin, Number one. Uh, number two, uh, that we could fix the wage system here in Marikina and make it still viable. And three, you know, uh, make it competitive. So Buddy focused on the big shoe brands that were coming into the country and came up with styles and designs to rival these in terms of value and fashion. Actually, Buddy started out making leather sandals to compete in the luxury leather market, but these did not do well and he turned his attention to shoes. So we started making prototypes, and we went product testing, and then, and then um, my foreman, the first shoemaker na kasama ko talaga, uh, told me that um, I think na awa na siya sa akin, because I think maybe six months na walang income, walang anything, so pasweldo and everything, but no money is coming in. So he said, na, "Boss, ano tayo?" Um, Gawa na lang muna tayo ng, ano, ng maramihan para doon sa mga sinusuplayan namin dati. So, we, we did our typical style. We, made, we became a subcon for smaller brands. We made uh, boat shoes, mga lang yan, diba? Then, uh, doon medyo na-spark na yung interest ko in, in going to leather shoes na. This was the time when everyone was into mass production of easy-to-produce styles. Buddy did not want to go into that direction, so he studied the European and American brands, watched the videos of their factory tours, which included the process of luxury shoemaking, and decided he could incorporate these ideas into the local market. At first, talaga very resistant din yung mga tao ko kasi parang uh, hindi hindi ganyan. That's not, that's not the way that we do it, di ba? Parang ganyan. No, 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 you really have to do it like this. You, the styling has to be like this. And you, can, you, can, you can't force yung gusto mo because that's the reason why we're not competitive anymore. His workers eventually relented and followed his ways. The first pair they made was for his wedding, and he was surprised that he could wear the leather shoes the whole day without much discomfort. I'm a Crocs kind of guy before. So I, I love flip-flops, I love Crocs, rubber shoes, get them. So I'm not into leather shoes, talaga. But when when I got married, then we made yung pair na ano for me. Tapos I I was able to uh, wear it the whole day. Tapos kahit ng gabi na nandun yung pagod, but not naman yung sakit na yung pagod because of the shoes, de ba? It is a fact that the average Filipino guy puts a whole lot of premium on comfort. So many are averse to wearing leather shoes on a regular basis. But he wanted to dispel this notion and set about to make leather shoes that are as comfortable as sandals. We incorporated the uh, builds and materials that are used for sandals into the shoes that we So, the first, it was RTW sizing. Then we found out that a lot of Filipinos actually don't know their proper shoe size. Typically, uh, since majority of the shoes are made in China, um, medyo payat yung hulma. So the profile of the shoes, really narrow, narrow fitting. So they're forced to get bigger sizes. So pag dinala mo siya dito sa amin, sa standard size, sinabi mo sa amin na ganun yung size na ano, biglang um, 
you know, we'll be making a bigger shoe all the time. Diba? Which is what happened during the first few months namin. From an average of 20 shoes per month on his first year of operation, Buddy and his team now come out with 80 pairs a month of their fourth year. As nabubuo yung concept ng Blackwing when we started it, I wanted it to become a model for the mom and pop shoemakers here in Marikina. So, kunyari, uh, usually kasi ang tandem dito, yung babae mananahe, yung lalaki sa patero, di ba? So, mag-asawa yan. So, we wanted to make a proof of con uh, uh, concept business na, na they can actually establish a small workshop with less than 10 employees and have income that is uh, similar to, let's say, mga managerial positions, mga ganon, di ba? So, even the marketing and, and you know, and the marketing efforts and the presence of online, it has to be minimal in the sense na you can't have a full blast website with all the, you know, with all the bells and whistles. So Buddy set up a Facebook page and an Instagram account and posted regularly here. He had no formal advertising but instead relied on word of mouth. By the end of the first year, we were only making around 30 pairs a month. Tapos, by the second year, yeah, that one, ang ano namin is just to break even kasi kailangan ko around maka 45 pairs eh. So, uh, by the second year naman, nagawa na namin yun. It is hope that the shoe industry in Marikina will again proliferate and prove that there is an alternative business model to mass production, especially now that many small brands are starting to come out. We can rebuild Marikina into the shoe capital of the Philippines. Instead of us, right now, if you look at Marikina, we're more known for hole in the wall restaurants and no, ano, diba? But, yung ilan na lang talaga yung mga workshops dito ng sapatos na who make craft shoes. Mass production, yes, meron pa rin. But, again, mass production competes with the mga Chinese na imports. Showcasing the heritage of Marikina is not a simple feat, but Buddy is determined to do this. He received some good news lately. There's a lot of interest from foreigners to invest here in Marikina, to make the shoes here and export to their home countries. So, but the thing is, nga, we need to develop the talent here first, again, before we could actually uh, do that. But then the interest is already there. When he started out, he only had his trusty foreman whom he gave the freedom to form his own team. His only condition was that no shoemaker above the age of 50 would be taken in because he fears that older craftsmen are not open to sharing their expertise with younger apprentices. With this situation, we may not have shoemakers in the next generation. But he also did away with the Puedina attitude of many workers. Black Wing Shoes is the culmination of everything he learned about the shoe making business and he intends to make the brand sustainable. Next year, he hopes to launch his full bespoke services. It's all about continuous improvements. And though the Puedina attitude has not been fully stamped out yet, he is gaining headway. Because we don't have inventory. As in, we only make what we need to what we need to make. So, uh, yun yung ano. Then next is the custom design. Why? Because we can't keep up coming with yung own designs. Na tingin namin, pwede sa client. Then, um, nangyayari is that if you come up with your own, own designs, you make samples and samples and samples all the time, di ba? And you post. Uh, what we did na lang to minimize din nga yung waste is that we let the clients bring in na lang the designs that they want. So aside from the ones that we have on our uh, Instagram account na, which is the shoes that we made already, uh, some of the clients, especially yung mga ikakasal, diba, they don't want to spend too much on shoes. So what they do is they go online, they find the design that they want na from the expensive brands, and they bring it here for replication. In reclaiming the lost glory of Marikina, which used to have the title of Little Italy of Asia, Buddy enumerated his many challenges. The biggest challenge right now is expanding. How to expand the business, how to grow the business. Why? Because the business model itself won't allow for it to grow too big. 
considering that theirs are custom-made and artisan shoes, but he says that they can afford to sell them at reasonable prices because they do not have to pay rent, they do not have the added burden of a showroom, and they maintain a lean, professional staff. They have no marketing expenses and just recently, they hired an assistant to handle their growing inquiries. With each and every client that we handle, diba? we have ano quirks ng pa. So, uh, recently, our challenge namin would be bunions. Mga ganyan. Diba? For, you know, before it was, before, yung, yung mataba lang yung paa. Ngayon, we have bunions, we have um, collapsed arcs, mga ganon. So, we actually, I actually had to study rin yung, ano lang, yung paa. Yung sa, in terms of how to use yung arc supports, mga ganon. So, right now, uh, for some of the clients nga, nire-recommend ko, magpasukat muna sila ng for custom insoles sa mga orthopedic, di ba? Then get the insoles and we can build the shoe around it. Buddy himself has measured over a thousand feet. Each foot is different and they have to build around imperfections. So design and functionality are big challenges they have to meet. The, one of the biggest problems uh, hindi ko pala solve is actually how to make shoes for diabetics. He also wants to go into expert because it is definitely more financially rewarding. He noted with much dismay the Filipino culture of tawad because he knows how much skill, time, and effort go into making a good pair of custom-made shoes. In the export market, naman, ang ano dyan, is nga, ang, ano, is, they, they actually value the handcrafted na products natin more. They see the value in it more. He notes that foreign buyers want to improve the life and working conditions of artisan workers like our shoemakers. Unfortunately, artisan jobs like shoemaking are considered lowly, so we may not have a future generation of artisans. Businessmen should pay these artisans well, he said, so we can replace the dignity and self-esteem they have lost over the years. Helping them put their own business through a responsible apprenticeship program will ensure this. Because if they become uh, talagang known shoemakers, hindi na sila magugutom eh. At the same time, they'd be, be uh, yun nga, pinakita ko rin itong model na ito na less than 10 people. Why? Because this micro, ano, this micro production model na to is, ano eh, kumbaga, good enough for one to provide for the family. For now, Buddy feels that he still cannot meet the production requirements of his foreign buyers and he cannot yet cut through the export barriers because of the many permits and quota required. He knows, though, that he is on the right path. His apprenticeship program is there and his bespoke services will be his entry point to the luxury market. Right now, there are already shoemaking communities in Montalban and San Mateo, and actual shoemaking can be done here. Quality control, though, has to be centralized in Marikina. His advice to would-be entrepreneurs? You read the books on how big uh, successful businessmen did it, but don't follow their steps. Why? Because it's kanya kanya yan eh. uh, Your path, their path is not your path. Each situation changes with the times eh. Diba? I mean, who would have thought nga when I started this na kahit paano, makakabuo ko ng brand na kaya kong gawin solid. Diba? It, siguro timing lang din because when we started out, walang masyadong katulad namin sa market. Prepare for a lot of failures. But you, know, you always have to keep in mind that these failures are your stepping stones to make yourself better. Where before Buddy's error margin was at 30%, it is now at low 3%. He also advises young entrepreneurs to be patient and not to expect instant rewards from their business ventures. Don't rush, he said. Instead, build your business from the ground up and be very discerning about the opportunities that may present themselves to you. Check out our Instagram page for the latest styles that we've made. You can uh, check out the uh, old shoes in uh, there. Then uh, for appointments, you can message our Facebook account or Google our phone number. Uh, it's strictly by appointment, so hope to see you guys soon. That was Mr. Buddy Tan, owner of Blackwing Shoes, our feature this week on Strictly Business.